Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing an updated version of the best tank build you can use. As usual, it's got no problems taking out the toughest bosses in the game while throwing out some good damage. It's like a support build that can still solo any enemy even though it works amazingly well in co-op mode. Like you can just face tank all of the damage while your teammates get free hits off. But anyways, let's actually dive into the build now and we'll start off with the best weapons to use. So in our offhand, the best shield to go with is the Fingerprint Shield, having the highest guard boost of 86 at max level. This just means it's going to consume less stamina when we are blocking hits with it. Now the defensive stats on it are also phenomenal, fully blocking physical hits and heavily reducing the damage of elemental attacks. Hence, we don't need to roll out of the way for majority of the attacks thrown at us because it'll either be heavily reduced or just have no effect at all. In addition, to make the shield even better, I am using the Great Shield Talisman that increases our guard boost by 10%. Again, just making us lose even less stamina now when absorbing those hits. It's actually really clutch, especially for boss fights because they can usually throw out some really big shots that would normally drain our entire stamina bar. However, with this setup, that's never an issue that comes to us. Furthermore, the Ash of War doesn't matter a whole lot, yet I do prefer to use no skill just so I don't have to two-hand my spear in any given situation when I want to use that Ash of War instead. And the last thing about the shield is it pairs extremely well with Leitna, the Albaneric Spirit Ashes. Normally, I tend to use the Mimic tier in pretty much every build because of how strong it is, but in spite of that, Leitna can actually keep up with the Mimic tier's damage and even survive for longer periods of time because of this styled build. For those who don't know, Leitna is an archer spirit that fires a 3 round burst of magical arrows very rapidly and only costs 74 mana to summon. The downside to it is she barely moves at all and doesn't have a lot of health either. Thus, when a boss jumps on her, she usually dies pretty quickly. Except, since this build is tank focused, we can get all of the attention constantly focused on us while our spirit summon shoots magical arrows non-stop just adding to our damage. It really suits the whole support role, having a high damage spirit summon while you block everything. Moving on, I'll show you guys where you can find all of these items. With the fingerprint shield, this is more of a mid to late game item, so I am going to throw in an alternative option that you can get much, much earlier on in the game. Even so, the place you can get this from is in the Cathedral of the Forsaken in Lyondale Royal Capital, only after defeating Margit, the Omen King. Beforehand, if you can't reach this area, you can grab the Visage Shield which has 4 less guard boost but it does weigh 5 pounds less and it's much easier to acquire this. All you have to do is reach the Kale Ruins in Kaelid, defeat the Mad Pumpkin Head duo and it'll be waiting for you in the treasure room. Afterwards, you can go and grab the Great Shield Talisman that can be found in a chest on a wagon, east of the Erdtree Gazing Hill, Site of Grace. Next, you can buy the Ash of War No Skill from the Knight Bernal that is located in the Warmaster's Shack. Very easy item to get. And lastly, with the Leitna Spirit Summon, this is picked up from the Slumbering Wolf Shack only after retrieving the right half of the Secret Medallion. Now coming back to our weapons, we still need something for the offensive part of this build, and what I found to be the best option is the Cross Naginata. I know a lot of you are going to say Mogwin's Sacred Spear is a lot better because of its special attack, but in reality, it isn't. And don't worry, I'm going to explain all of my reasonings for it shortly. Hence, with the Cross Naginata, we're going to be using the Occult Variation because this makes the weapon's physical damage scale with Arcane while increasing the passive bleed buildup and the Ash of War's bleed buildup. It just benefits this weapon in so many ways. On top of the weapon having good damage and bleed buildup, it works astonishingly well with shields, allowing us to poke at enemies while being fully protected from the front. So it only makes sense to use the Spear Talisman that increases the damage of thrusting weapons when counterattacking. The exact meaning of this talisman isn't increased damage when you counterattack using the heavy input, but rather when you poke at an enemy while they're attacking you at the same time. Basically, when you trade hits with an enemy while you're blocking, you're going to do more damage. Now something we can add to increase this damage even more is the Ash of War we can use on the spear, that being Seppuku. Your character loses a bit of health to place extra bleed buildup on the spear which is also increased even more because we're using the Occult Affinity on it. An extra 30 flat damage 
and a 30% damage buff because of another two items we use. The white mask that gives us a 10% damage increase whenever a blood loss happens near us, and the Lord of Blood's Exultation for a 20% damage increase, both of these lasting for 20 seconds. Now because we have so much bleed buildup, we can constantly proc that and keep these buffs going during boss fights with no problems whatsoever. That's pretty much how we're going to use this spear. Stay behind your shield and constantly drain your opponent's health bar with a mix of physical damage and bleed buildups, and they're not going to be able to get to you either. Finally for the weapons regarding Mogwin's Sacred Spear and why it's not the better option, even though you can still use it instead if you choose to, because with the way I have the stats set up, it'll still do some really good damage while being able to fast roll and not having to change anything at all in this build, but to just equip it. So with Mogwin Spear, it has a higher attack power by 169, except some of that is fire damage which gets negated separately from physical damage, meaning it's going to do less. Secondly, the Ash of War on it is amazing. We can all agree that it destroys bosses and regular enemies fairly quickly. However, it leaves you completely exposed, and in a tank build, that's the last thing you'd need. You want to be in the front blocking and absorbing all of the damage possible at all times, but this leaves you completely open to attacks. Whereas Seppuku on the cross Naginata just buffs the weapon so you can stay behind your shield fully protected while throwing out tons of damage. And finally, the Cross Naginata has a higher bleed buildup, including the Ash of War Seppuku on it, and it appears to swing much faster than Mogwin's Spear, just allowing us to get out more damage and bleed buildups even faster. Again, by all means, you can still equip Mogwin's Spear with no problems at all, not having to change absolutely nothing in this setup, but the Cross Naginata is still going to be the better option. Anyways, now for where you can find all of these items. With the Cross Naginata, this can be looted from the Gale Tunnel in Kaled on a corpse with a giant land octopus hanging from above. Afterwards, you can grab the Ash of Ors Seppuku by killing an invisible teardrop scarab that can be found east of the Freezing Lake site of Grace in the mountaintops of the Giants area. Similar to the Spirit Summoning, the Spirit Talisman can be found really close by inside of a chest in the Lakeside Crystal Cave, so you can pick up both of these items at the same time. Lastly, to get the Lord of Blood's Exultation, you'll have to defeat Eskar, a Priest of Blood, who can be found in the Liondale Catacombs. So that covers about everything for the weapons, yet we still have a few ways of making this setup stronger, with one of them being the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Now what I found to be the best tiers to use is the Green Burst Crystal that increases our stamina recovery speed by 33% for 3 minutes. This is very helpful for tank builds because after blocking a huge hit, you'll usually lower your shield down to increase your stamina recovery speed to block and throw out more damage afterwards. Then for the second tier, this one you have two options, with one of them being the green spill crystal, which increases our maximum stamina by 15% for 3 minutes as well. Again, just giving us more room to block and counterattack for longer periods of time. Then the other tier you could use is the opaline crystal, that raises our physical damage negation by 15% for another 3 minutes again. Now the only time I would use this one is if you plan on using the second buff, the Blood Boil Aromatic. Which, if you don't, not to worry, I do have an alternative to this option. What Blood Boil Aromatic does is it adds another 30% increased damage and 20% increased stamina for 60 seconds, which is absolutely perfect for this setup. However, the negative to this is it will make you take 25% increased damage as well. Hence, the reason why I would use the Opaline Hard tier to help reduce the negative effect of this buff. If you don't like using consumables, not to worry cause I get that. Farming for crafting supplies can always feel annoying, even though it's an extremely powerful item for this setup. But anyways, a substitute buff you could use would be to grab a dagger and throw on the Ash of War Golden Vow. This isn't going to be as strong giving you an 11.5% damage increase and a 7.5% damage negation bonus for 40 seconds, yet there aren't any negative side effects to it and you can constantly reuse this without having to worry about farming. As usual, I'll show you guys where you can find all of these items. With the Green Burst Crystal, this one can be rewarded after defeating an Erdtree Avatar boss that can be found at the Minor Erdtree in Kaled. 
Afterwards, if you choose to go with the Opaline Hard tier, it's pretty much the same thing. You'll have to kill another Avatar boss that can be found at the Minor Erd Tree north of Fort Ferrith in Kaled. Or if you go the Green Spill Crystal route, this one doesn't require any fighting at all. Just reach the Minor Erd Tree in Mistwood and it'll be laying at an altar for you to grab. For the second buff, I'm just going to display all of the locations for the crafting supplies you'll need in order to make the Blood Boil Aromatic. If you choose not to use this, it's all good because you can grab the secondary option, Golden Vow, which can be rewarded after defeating a Mounted Godric Knight in Limgrave. Very easy and early item to get. So before I go over the minimum stats required, we still have the armor to take a look at, which does benefit this build. With the helmet, you know we're going with the white mask to increase our damage by 10% whenever a blood loss happens near us, which is usually a must-have item whenever there is some kind of bleed buildup involved. The second important piece is the Duelist Greaves. These have a passive buff on them, making enemies more aggressive towards you, which is exactly what we want. We can use these to help make targets more focused on ourselves, while your spirit summon or teammates can get easy hits off on bosses or strong enemies. It's not a must-have item, yet it does go hand-in-hand -hand with this kind of setup. Finishing up with the chest and gloves, I'm just using the knight set to give us more protection since there isn't anything else that's going to really benefit us a whole lot, and this gives us a good amount of damage negation, so if you do get hit somehow, you're not going to get too shotted. Now just like before, I'll show you guys where you can find all of these pieces. For the white mask, you'll have to defeat one of the three nameless mask invaders, that can be found in the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. Make sure not to kill the boss Mog beforehand, or else the invaders won't spawn in. Next, you can grab the Duelist Greaves by killing the Duelist enemy that is located in Lyondell Royal Capital, near the large Colosseum. And finishing off with the chest and gloves, they're not crazy important. Any medium to heavy pieces will do, but if you want the exact knight's armor, you can buy it from the twin maiden husks, who can be found at the round table. So coming to the end of the build, we can finish off with the minimum stats required and the last talisman being used. So to use everything effectively in this build, you'll need at least 48 strength and 20 dex. Afterwards, I'd recommend putting majority of your points into arcane for more damage and bleed buildup and endurance so you can block more hits and still be able to fast roll. Then the last talisman we use benefits this build all around which is really nice. The Erdtree's Favor plus 2. It's going to increase our maximum health by 4%, stamina by 9.6%, and max equip load by 7.5%. This talisman's not absolutely needed, so if you do have something else in mind, it's not going to ruin this build or anything. For where you can find this, you can grab it in Lyondell, Ashen Capital, which is going to be near the end of the game, hence another reason why I'm saying you could use something else instead. So that covers about everything for this build. Before I end the video off, I do want to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope I see you all in the next one.